The fourth, uh, Hustle Player of the Year. She also, uh, that's in second row, or second row for Cal Poly. And joining her on the honorable mention team is Jonay Irvin and Ariana Elegato. Coach, so Molly gave us a little recap of your reaction. Uh, when you found out, I mean, you obviously were pumped. Just your thoughts on, on what it means, how excited you are, everything. Yeah, I was super excited. I had just come off the practice court and I rushed upstairs because they had the media call. And I, uh, I just got in on the tail end of it, so I had missed all the other, when I heard Molly's name. It's like, what? Player of the year? It's exciting. So I sprinted down to the locker room. I first went to the gym because she wasn't in there. So uh, I was really excited uh, for Molly, but also for the team. Because in my experience with coaching, it's the team that wins that award. If we hadn't finished in first place, I don't think Rachel Clancy would have won the award. I don't think that well, Christina probably would have won the award. But uh, because the team did well, and as you heard from Molly, she recognizes that her achievement is a direct result of having great teammates around her, unselfish teammates around her, but also she worked her butt off um, to put herself in that position. We want to give her the ball because she's shooting about 60% from the floor, so it's a pretty good day if you can get the ball to Molly, and uh, very rare that she doesn't deliver. Talk about your other players who won. Kayla being recognized for best hustle. That should have been unanimous. But your thoughts on that and, and your honorable mentions too. Well, I'm so uh, I'm so happy that everybody else saw it the same way I saw it with Kayla Griffin. Uh, I say this to my team every year. So that is the award, the award that I think signifies Cal Poly basketball more than anything. You're really honored if you can get an MVP award for sure. But that uh, the award uh, hustle says. We are going to give our very best regardless of what's going on in the court, regardless of whether we have the best players. We're just going to get after it all the time. And I feel like this is an award that every single Cal Poly Mustang should want to win. If we have that kind of attitude, we're always going to be in the top of the league um, for a team. If every single person on our team is hustling to the best of their ability. And I'm feeling like Kayla was just so deserving of the award this year. Uh, obviously, Joe Day got it the year before, and I've had two others, Carrie Dubron, and uh, who's on my staff, and Odessa Jenkins, who also won the award, and very, very deserving. Your thoughts headed into the conference tournament? You had, had time to watch film from Long Beach and let it all sink in. Um, were you, how do you rally the troops? Actually, the I didn't watch any film from the Long Beach State game. I was so disgusted, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Uh, but there are a lot of things that we're trying to just improve on if we can put a couple more sets in. The thing for this conference tournament, there's no team that's advantaged or disadvantaged because of the current format. Every team that shows up at the Honda Center will be showing up for the first time in the Honda Center on the same day. Every team has one day to prepare for their opponent, and that's the situation that we're facing. We don't know who we're going to face at this stage until after Wednesday night, and then Thursday we'll have our one day to prepare, hop on the bus, head down to Anaheim, watch the men beat their opponent, and then uh, hopefully get psyched up about our opportunity in front of us. But uh, that's kind of our plan for the week. How we respond, we have to be able to put our loss behind us. We had a number of players that didn't have their best games, certainly. But also, we have to come with the attitude. The Big West Conference Tournament, in my opinion, is a very physical battle, and it's very rare that the officiating is chippy. Um, so we have to be physically prepared for, in all likelihood, really, really physical teams that I think are going to make it through to the semis. And uh, we have to have that mentality of if we get pushed around, we're going to be the losers. We got to be able to hold our ground and get the first punch in if we can. Coming from Kayla. Yes. <laughs> Coach, the awards and the honorable mentions, those are awesome for your team right now. Does that sort of uh, does that sort of help from the loss of last game, or what does that mean going into the to Well, I'm super excited for our players that were honored in that way. I think that they're very deserving of those honors. Uh, there's a lot of people that contribute to our success, and not everybody can be on it. Uh, if you look at the all-conference team, first and second team, Pacific is loaded with uh, practically their whole team. and. Deservedly so, they're really, really good players. I think because our team has 
um, somebody who's kind of emerged a little bit more in the scoring role and really shares the ball very well, that it's hard to have, okay, well, you got all five starters in double figures. That hasn't been our MO this year. Uh, but all of them have been tremendously adding to whatever they could. I think the area that we really want to improve on for our team to have success is that when their first thing that they do, the very best thing they do, isn't going well, can they move to number two and still do that job really well? Because sometimes we get stuck with not doing our first job to the best of our ability, we get a little bit down about that, and then we let number two job suffer, or number three job suffer. If we can really stay on the mentality of, okay, well, I may be off on this side of my game, I can bring the defense, I can bring the rebounding, I can bring help defense, I can pressure the basketball, well, I can make the assist. There's a ton of things I can set mean screen. And if we can stay in that focal place, um, I think that we become a very, very good team. How do you practice for that during this week of practice? Where are you guys going to be focusing on that? Well, a lot of mental toughness stuff and just physical play, being able to handle some physical play. We have a couple guys that are on our practice squad, and uh, they help us a little bit with some physical play, but also they can really shoot the three and really quick. And so I think it prepares us well. We're going to be asking all of our scout team members to be super physical on the court this week, to really crash the boards and be uh, – hacking our girls all over the place, whether they catch the ball on the block for Molly or they're drilling the basketball. We're going to try to, to make it like as game-like as we can as, as what we've experienced at the tournament, which is super physical play. Coach, uh, contrasting last year's team to this year, uh, with Christina being kind of more of a combo forward, able to shoot the ball outside and score inside, um, and this year with, with Molly as a big West player of the year and the focus of your, of your offense being uh, in the paint, um, do you feel like that better prepares your team also to have that kind of paint presence, that force, that kind of uh, strength down low uh, for a conference tournament situation? Like you said, that you know is going to be very physical. Right. In my opinion, when I've watched the success of every team in the conference for a long time now, um, it has been the teams that have a strong post presence that have been able to be successful to get through. Now, they have to have other components, too, but there hasn't been a single team that's just won by three-point shooting. It, it hasn't happened. So I think that uh, we've spent, because our, our conference is so strong and people do different things with Molly, it's prepared as well, whether they're going to bring a double team or, uh, you know, we've seen some zone coverage as well. We've seen pretty much everything that we're going to face. Long Beach State played just a little bit of box and one on Ariana and uh, stuck primarily with their 1-3-1 and, and really disrupted us that way. So. We've been exposed to a lot of different zone coverages, which tends to slow us down. So we're going to keep trying to work this week on keeping the pace about us. We, we need to get a little bit more scoring out of Kayla Griffin, I think, in the high post for us to be successful when we are facing zones. Uh, she's such a willing distributor that sometimes she forgets about that other part of her job. Um, but certainly I think that we, with having 60% shooter down on the block, that that's somewhere we still want to go. And, and you're somebody who likes to push the tempo as far as offensively. Um, have you had to adjust your thinking about that at all, or is that something that uh, that Molly's kind of fit fit into, or is that something where you've had to say, hey guys, uh, from time to time when Molly's on the floor, you got to wait until she gets down there and feed her the ball inside. No, we never do that. Okay. We just say, Molly, you gotta gotta put go the pedals to the metal there ball. There you go. Get that six five down the court. But yeah, we we're best in. Uh, in transition, if we have to grind it out in the half court, I don't think we're at our best. And on a side note, uh, the 19 wins this season is second best in Division uh, Division One school history. Mm -hmm. football, so yeah, there you go. And I think I misspoke when I said uh, Kayla was a four. She's the fifth player at Cal Poly to win the Hustle Award. So. Oh, who did I forget? No, you get it was Odessa twice. Oh, Harry. Uh, <laughs> I know that. Yeah. <laughs> they made me more than Odessa. You got it right. <laughs> Thank you, Faith. Yeah. Well, Fox Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Lee, Cup Baseball, ranked number 20.